So I'd like to reopen our meeting. We've been in executive session and now um, we're back in open session. So I think we should start with the Pledge of Allegiance because we forgot that. Yeah. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Uh, the first order of business is to approve the minutes from May, our May 22nd meeting. Um, so uh, does anybody have any input around those minutes? Are we prepared to approve? It's all good? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So okay. could I have a, a motion to approve the minutes of May 22nd? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. The next item on the agenda is public comment. So, Betsy, would you like to come? I promise I'll be fast. Okay, great. <laughs> um, uh, Betsy Gillis, and thank you. Um, good evening and happy end of school year. A big, huge, huge thank you <laughs> to all of you for your service to the students and the families of Duxbury. Um, I hope you have an excellent summer. Um, I was hoping to add an item uh, to a school committee meeting agenda for your consideration for the fall. I think that you're going to discuss that later maybe on the agenda or at some point. Um, I've spoken to Heather Tucker and the CPAC briefly about this prior to tonight. Um, so uh, here's a request. Um, besides being new to the district and her job and getting to know her SPED staff and the approximately 470 kids in Duxbury on IEPs, not to mention the 504s, um, Heather has managed to assemble, launch, and serve on a committee on dyslexia. Um, and if she were here, I would say thank you to her um, directly, as I did last night at the CPEC um, meeting. Um, as you know, the committee was formed after and in response to the October 2018 law, um, new le legislation requiring districts in Massachusetts to screen elementary age students for dyslexia to provide uh, research-based interventions and to enhance teacher training to serve students with dyslexia. I was hoping that since there are many stakeholders, those are people that are interested in, invested in, and impacted by the work that the committee is doing, that perhaps in mid-fall, um, even she suggested September is probably a little early, um, in mid-fall, around the one-year anniversary, like I said, um, that the committee might present their work. Um, I would imagine that it would include things like uh, who comprises the committee, how did they conduct their assessment of current state, uh, because I believe that portion is done, uh, what were their key findings, um, and as a result of those key findings, what actions do they plan to take as a result of that assessment, and what will any of this cost the district, and how can we ensure that there's funding uh, to go with it? Um, and lastly, what is their plan to communicate all of that uh, to the, st the stakeholders? Great. So I'm hoping that you might find um, time in the fall to make room for this agenda item. Um, and I thank you in advance for your consideration. Great. Well, thank you. That sounds like a good idea. Thank you. So thank you very much. Great. Okay. Great. Any other public comment today? There'll be another opportunity for public comment at, at the end of the meeting, so if anything comes up, please feel free to um, voice your opinions later. Um, so now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Klingeman. Oh, no, we were going to do students. Yeah, if, if it's first. okay, do you mind if yes, we do students yes, yes. first? Because I think there's a big game tonight I heard through the grapevine. So, <laughs> try to get, so yes. we're gonna, we got a couple uh, groups of students here tonight, and I'm going to ask first, um, if Kaylin Brown and Casey Cameron are here. You guys want to come up? I might ask Mr. Donovan to chime in too. How are you girls? Hello. So we wanted to bring you here tonight to really uh, thank you and congratulate you for your um, duffel bag fundraiser, which I will tell you, your letter that went out to the community was so inspiring to so many people. Mm -hmm. It truly touched the community. Um, and so we just wanted to commend you for that publicly. And I'm sure people can weigh in too, but we're really proud of your efforts. And um, I know I'd love to hear how it went. Um, 
but it seemed like it went pretty well. Yeah. Yes. And so, so why don't you guys introduce yourself quickly um, so everybody knows who you are. So I'm Kaylin Brown. I'm 16. I'm the youngest. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm Casey. I'm the oldest. <laughs> I just graduated. graduated. Okay. So girls, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm going to. But um, <laughs> can you just tell us very briefly for people who don't understand why why you were you were you were soliciting suitcases and duffel bags mm -hmm. um, from the community as a fundraiser in partnership with DCF, I believe, right? Yes. And you want to just tell a little bit of why? Yeah. yeah. So um, Kayla and I have been in and out of foster care since we were four and five, mm -hmm. and so. When a foster child moves placements, which happens quite frequently with us, we move placements 11 times, you nor it's normally an emergency placement, so you don't have enough time to really prepare. So that results in children getting handed like trash bags and plastic bags, and you have to put as much of your belongings in the trash bag as fast as you can so that there aren't any issues with like the parents and stuff like that. So. Yeah. For us, it was very difficult to deal with that because it there's like a stigma with being handed a trash bag. It's kind of like you're not it's good degrading, enough. It's degrading, pretty yeah. much. Um, and I wrote the letter because I wanted, and we've been talking about this since we moved to Duxbury, which was four years ago, and we wanted to do something that we weren't given the opportunity to have, but like wanted other children to have, um, especially younger youth, because they can have those suitcases and bags through how many other placements they go to if they go back home. Um, but the outcome was really great, and there was um, plenty of people who donated, but also um, last night we actually picked up 32 suitcases, and it's like uh, people I didn't know were part of the community reached out, and students did too, parents, um, people from other places, and it was really wonderful, it was really good, I didn't expect as much as we got, um, that it turned out wonderful, and I'm going to be proud. It's so good. We got good around job. like 200, wow. 250 suitcases. Yeah. So. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Good yeah. job, girls. Thank you. Thank you. So we want to leave, we want to congratulate you, but we also want to <laughs> give you a little gift. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. I won't force you to open it, but it's actually a Dutch Prairie bag. So. <laughs> it's a bag. It's like a bag. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. We're so proud of you. And, uh, okay, you want to grab that? Thank you. This is something Thank else so in there, too. But, um, Thank you so much. And we appreciate you coming out on the last couple of days of school. But yeah. uh, mm -hmm. it was it was a um, project that was worthy of public mm -hmm. attention and uh, uh, truly inspiring. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you all so, so much. Thank you job. so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I'll take that. No, I'll take it. No, you're going to need to take that. You need to improve it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> she got it. We always take a picture. I'll take a picture. Are we all going? Yeah. Am I going? You girls are so modest. We need Mrs. Adams here. She's talking. Julia, picture. Okay, we also have, and I'm, I'm not sure, um, so I'm going to call these names. So we have, we have four uh, winners um, from the New York Times editorial contest, and um, Maggie Strauss, Noah Hanfield, Kara Briggs, and Julia Phipps, if you're here. Come on, come on up. up. <laughs> As well, oh, come on up. As, as well as high school English teacher uh, Corinne Woodworth. Corinne, do I see you back there somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a 
How are you guys? Th thanks for coming. Do you want to quickly introduce yourself and then, Mrs. Woodworth, if you could maybe explain why we're here tonight? It'd be awesome. So, do you want to use the camera? Yeah. So, you have oh. an kids, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. I'm Kira Briggs. I'm Maggie Strauss. I'm Julia Phipps. I'm Noah Hanfield. And I'm Corinne Woodworth. <laughs> <laughs> um, every year, my AP juniors enter the New York Times editorial contest um, because part of what we do is learn how to write arguments. Um, and this year, I was really excited when Maggie came into my room a couple weeks ago and said, I won, I won. Um, so out of 10,509 entrants from across the country, these are four finalists. So Maggie is a winner. She's one of 11 winners. Um, Noah is a runner-up. Kira's an honorable mention, and Julie is a third round finalist. Great. So out of, I would say, the top 200, we have four right here in Duxbury. Nice. And I'm really proud of their work. Great. And, and maybe they could tell you the titles of yeah. their, yeah, of their yeah. editorials. <laughs> um, mine was Time Heals All Wounds. It was about how we as humans become desensitized to tragedy as time moves on. Uh, mine was why cultural appropriation is actually critical to human progress, and it was about how the adoption of different cultures, if it's done in a non-offensive way, is actually beneficial to people coming together. Um, not exactly sure, but I think mine was titled <laughs> why, <laughs> why Election Day Should Be More Like the Fourth of July, and it was about why, how um, Election Day now is very it's not as popular and it's not as effective as it should be and that can be fixed by celebrating it as much as we do this the 4th of July like and at the national holidays. Hmm. Um, mine was called uh, Why Female Priests Will Save the Broken Catholic Church and it was about how the introduction of female priests would create a more like relevant conversation for everyone and it would be um, it would just involve more people and make them kind of turn back to the church which in recent years has kind of made some people turn their backs on it, so. Did you run that by Father Bob? <laughs> <laughs> great. Guys, great job. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 Why don't you guys go? just have a little something for you. Swag. And a picture. Okay. And a picture. Okay. It's like a writing set, a journal, a Duxbury journal, and Duxbury so pens, much. but not the pens anymore. Not <laughs> summer reading. <laughs> yeah, right. So. Thank you yeah. so much. Why don't you just get the other side? Go send it. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the mugs. <laughs> Did you have something? I just have a quick update. Okay, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, brief. Do it. I don't. I think Danielle's going to defer. I defer. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Katie, you have a, a quick report. Just a quick. Right. Um, I just wanted to provide a, a brief update tonight on um, the operating budget year-end balance for fiscal year 19. So as of today, uh, June 12th, I'm projecting that we'll have a balance of $64,000 at the end of the fiscal year. 
um, there's still some variability to this number um, as we still do have some outstanding salary, utility, and contracted services commitments. And these are known and they are projected, but they're based on an estimated figure and not a final invoice. Um, so it's important to note that this figure is reflective of us not utilizing any funds from the Special Education Reserve Fund. Um, and so that should allow us to keep the balance of the reserve fund um, as I had previously reported at the $318,899,000. Okay. Great. If there is 64000 left, would that go back mm -hmm. in the reserve? Great mm -hmm. question, yes. yes. If, if we leave the balance, when we leave the balance, that'll It'll go back to the special back. reserve fund. Mm -hmm. This is incredible news, by the way, not the 64 necessarily, but the fact that we didn't have to use it this year. Yeah. Um, and you know, I would say we could have, um, but I, we didn't want to. And, and now, and if you remember in the FY20 budget, we, um, we took away that, that, that offset. offset. So we kind of weaned ourselves off that offset. And now the reserve fund is really gonna be a reserve fund. Yeah. I mean, that was the original intent. And so it's, mm -hmm. it's takes, taken us a couple years to get there, but we're there. Um, which is just, it's, it's really, really good news and, and um, a lot of hard work to get there, but I'm, I'm thrilled, so. That's great. That's it. Thanks, Katie. Thank you. Tanner, would, would you oh, like to yeah. go? I just got a few things tonight. So the first was uh, two weeks ago, two big events that happened. The first was the SUMA Awards where um, 193 high school students were recognized for academic excellence and exemplary attitude in school. The second one was the National Honor Society inductions, where 40% of the junior class was inducted, and they go through a rigorous application process with uh, recommendations and an interview and writing out all these different templates with all the service and leadership. You have to fill a bunch of different pillars. Um, the last week, this past Thursday, was the Spanish and French Honor Society induction, and the, it's a smaller number of seniors, and they will be working to promote their foreign language and the culture of that next year. And also, last Friday, five Plymouth Area Collaborative students graduated from high school uh, after, like, their... The, I talked with Jess Murray a lot about this because she is a big part of the Ducks Buds and she said all their hard work, dedication to learning life skills and taking classes at Bridgewater State. So lots of members from the Ducks Buds Club went to support them on their special day. Uh, also this week is last week's school, so for the high school it's finals. So our review days were last Friday and this Monday. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we have two exams per day. And then our last day, we just have one. And lastly, I'm sure you all know about this, but I just thought I'd throw it in, is that we are handing in our laptops on Friday. And just one thing I've meant, I wanted to mention, I'm sure you probably heard this, a lot of the juniors are stressed um, because they want their laptops for their college stuff over the summer, and I know like we have computers at home, but they're both my parents' work computers. But um, I guess something just down the road to think about next time we transition laptops. But I uh, just thought I'd add that. So that's more important. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good point. Okay. Um, I have a few items to, um, to cover since just things that I've. I mean, I, I I'd have to talk to Cheryl Lewis. I I think it's pretty complicated. There's a pretty, actually. In, there's yeah. a pretty in depth plan of taking all the computers back, figuring out which ones are usable, and redeploying them to carts. But I would yeah. say that if there's any juniors that have work to do over the summer, um, they can contact us, and we can make arrangements for them to come into the schools to do any computer work. They can email me or Dr. Antonucci. Yeah. So if you hear anyone saying that okay. the schools are open and we can help them. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Can you put that out? Yeah. And then post it on Facebook. We really can't do it in a global fashion. We can't. Yeah. It just, it's, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a, this is a massive transition. Um, and so I, I can talk to Cheryl about it tomorrow, but yeah. it's, we can certainly help in pockets, but mm -hmm. I. Or maybe the DSU could. 
Like, yeah, yeah, between yeah. the library. Yeah, they don't the have a, they don't computers. have big surplus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Well, thank you. Um, there are a few things that uh, I've been attending over the past few weeks since we last met. So on, uh, I went to Senior Awards Night, um, and I, I know Dr. Antonucci's mentioned it, but a, more than four hundred and five thousand dollars in scholarships were awarded to our seniors. Uh, and that's pretty impressive for a town the size of Duxbury. So I wanted to express my appreciation for, for that generosity. Uh, two names of all the donors, two names um, came to mind uh, that evening. One was the Partridge Fund. Uh, if you count the recurring scholarships that they are giving to prior um, graduates, uh, they've doled out um, more than $200,000 in scholarships this year. Uh, and the Duxbury Thrift Shop uh, managed to give more than $70,000 in scholarships this year. So um, our, our community has really supported our students and it continues to really support our students and I really appreciate that. I also attended the baccalaureate service on the 30th uh, of May and um, that was lovely and well organized. It wasn't, the attendance was disappointing and I think we all received uh, email correspondence relating to that and I, I followed up um, with Reverend Cullen at First Parish Church which was where the service was and I think that there may be further discussions but our initial discussion was constructive so um, that was good. Uh, graduation was wonderful and I'd like to thank everybody who, um, who helped put that together and the speakers. I thought the, the speakers were wonderful um, and the messages kind of had a, a, maybe an unintentional coherence, which I thought was great. Um, and then I attended the Partridge Scholarship Reception last weekend, um, with, you were there as well, um, which was fun to listen to the students returning from prior years as well as the, uh, this year's recipients. So that was, those were all very happy um, occasions over the past couple of weeks. Um, Can I make one comment on graduation? Sure. And this is just my opinion. I would like to see more teachers attend graduation. That's just my, okay. the, I've been going for five years now and I feel like attendance has dwindled. And as a former teacher, I just feel like that that should, support should be there for our students, my two cents. Great, thank you for that. Uh, I also wanted to mention um, some very sad news that the community has had over the past few days um, uh, involving two school families. Um, and uh, I wanted to mention uh, the passing of Andrea Gordon. Um, and I hope that we can all um, keep both families in our hearts uh, over the coming months because uh, it will be very difficult uh, for everybody. Um, so, uh, so sorry for the sad note, but it's been a sombering, uh, a sobering experience for all of us, I think. Uh, and that's um, everything that I had to say. Did you want to add, have you, you got any comments that you want to, you've done your recognitions? Yep. Okay. So then the next item is uh, um, an update from CPAC and a presentation of the Excellence in Teaching Award. So I think, who's here, Liz? Yeah. Hi, Hi. Hi. come on up. <laughs> Hi, I'm Liz Kislowski. I'm here on behalf of the, the CPAC um, it, committee. Um, I'm here twofold. First, to recognize the Excellence in Education recipient, and then to give you an update on how the CPAC was doing this year. Um, if you don't mind, I'd prefer to do the Excellence in education award first. Um, for those that aren't aware, um, the CPAC really enjoys doing the Excellence in Education Award because it's an opportunity for us to really recognize um, all the efforts that every teacher does every single day for all our students and especially those students that are on IEPs and 504s. So how do we come upon the Excellence in Education Award is um, we solicit from the families with kids on IEPs and 504s, and as a board, we look at the nominations and we read them and 
Um, they're all excellent, and it's actually a wonderful reflection on the excellent uh, work that is being done in our schools. Um, this year, our recipient's name came from um, a family member, Ileana Schaffner, and her nomination, uh, her nominee, and her submittal really spoke to each one of our board members because of the eloquence in which it was written really spoke to each one of us in our own journeys and it was really nice to hear somebody um, eloquently put it on paper and nominate this wonderful person. Um, the person that she nominated and we would like to um, bestow the Excellence in Education Award onto is Elise McPherson of the Chandler Elementary School. Um, she's a lovely, lovely woman. Um, and if you don't mind, before I hand over this award, I would like to read the submission that really spoke to all of us. So, um, and she has not heard it yet, so this is lovely. <laughs> okay, so bear with me because I'm not the best public speaker. Okay, um, so Ileana submitted this referral. Um, my son was about four years old when he first attempted to put words together. It was a series of low, guttural sounds that only my husband and I recognized as an approximation of speech. Along with ASD, our son was diagnosed with significant apraxia. The seriousness of his condition, we were told, meant that he'd probably never successfully communicate without the assistance of an electronic device, a tool that our son has always been too impatient to operate. Instead, my husband and I became his translators. We felt our world become smaller and smaller as it circled around just a handful of immediate friends and family members who understood our child's attempt to communicate. Even teachers at our son's preschool in New York suggested that he refrain from participating in group activities such as holiday pageants, Halloween parades, and music class because they explained he'd find them frustrating. That's when we moved to Duxbury and met Elise McPherson at Chandler's Integrated Preschool Program. She acknowledged that our child's motor planning disorder was a significant obstacle, but she also recognized in him a quality that so many other people had taken for granted, willpower. Our son has a stubborn, self-directed nature that makes it difficult for him to focus on things he'd rather not be bothered doing, such as intensive speech therapy. <laughs> but Elise knew how to get our son's persistent streak to work to his advantage. She saw that he had an entire world of ideas locked in his head that he was desperate to express. And with tremendous effort and tremendous encouragement, she slowly coaxed it out of him. Elise has worked with our son every year since then. She has always arranged her schedule to ensure that she would be the one overseeing his speech lessons so that the two of them could build on their progress and keep the precious momentum going. He is eight years old now and will be transferring to Alden next fall. His articulation is still a work in progress. He is still stubborn, still self-directed, still full of complex ideas and definite opinions. But now he brings them confidently out into the open. My husband and I sit and listen in wonder as he shares his knowledge about the sinking of the Titanic, the eruption of Mount St. Helens, the painted dogs of Africa, the, con the con uh, conversation efforts of Beatrix Potter. He has a wicked sense of humor and a biting wit that makes strangers standing in the checkout line at the grocery store laugh out loud. When he sees a friend in need or perceives something wrong happening, he speaks up. I don't know how you begin, excuse me, to say thank you to the person who helped your child find his voice and indirectly his place in the world. But I hope this nomination is a small place to start. So this is really 
obviously <laughs> very touching and such an honor for me to act. And we, um, without taking my words for me, because he truly is an amazing student, as are all of my students. I work very hard to make sure that each and every one of them feels special. Um, and feels as though we can do things together and we can accomplish everything that they have in their heart to accomplish. It really means a lot to me to have this. So thank you. Thank you. So can we take a real picture? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> And the parents. I don't need to get another picture. We can talk to you. You are amazing. We can all have our friends. Yeah, I know. We can have our friends. This year, um, with the CPAC, um, we have to say a lot of thanks uh, to the to, to the guidance of our co-chairs, um, Jen Mazur and Allison Kehoe, for all their hard work that they've done. They've really worked hard at getting the CPAC out there. Um, we've increased our visibility at the local open houses, our communications with the PTAs, um, and we've received a lot of positive feedback and some good attendance at the meetings. Um, we've also, new this year, we started three, um, we had support group meetings throughout the year. We had about three of them, they were well received, um, and we hope to continue that in the future. We had um, different speakers talk. Um, the Federation for Children with Special Needs came out to do the basic rights lecture. Um, Matthew Flynn, the mediator for the Bureau of Special Education and Appeal, came out. Um, we were, we had Heather Tucker, Dr. Antonucci, Dr. Klingelman um, come over and it was, it was wonderful to have such a great um, reception, not only with administration, but within the community and we hope to increase our visibility and outreach for the next year um, and to increase and foster a understanding and um, inclusive educational world. Great. So, Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Please don't feel bad if you want to leave. <laughs> uh, we understand. That's right. That's right. There you go. We want the help. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I did, um, John, talk to, I ran into Allison Kehoe and um, Jen McGee this morning at Alden and just kind of talking about that visibility piece and, you know, maybe having like every family have the SPED director in each building, just give the family who, who has a child that's on an IEP or a new child on a 504 IEP information about the CPAP. Absolutely. Just, yeah. We Can could even just, do it as part of our registration process. And yeah. do they usually attend open house nights? And they do. Them, have a moment they to do. speak? Maybe we could make yeah. sure yeah, of that. Because it's just really the membership, the ongoing membership. Thing. Right. I mean, I wasn't telling them anything that they haven't heard yeah. before, but yeah. I'm anything we can do. Problem solve. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so the next item on the agenda is the superintendent's evaluation. Um, which uh, we do annually, um, typically at the end of the school year. I, uh, 
as chairman, I've collected, just so people outside know how the process works, I've collected the individual um, evaluation papers from all the members uh, and then um, shared them with John. Uh, and they're public documents, so they'll they remain on file in the central office. Um, I have a, a brief summary of what we've kind of all said, uh, and then um, I'll open it up to any other comments that if you'd like to make any comments. So uh, just looking across all the, um, the evaluations, there were several achievements that were noted, kind of came to the top. First was that there's been significant progress in aligning the practices taking place in schools with the goals and objectives that, that are set out at the beginning of the year. So the, what's articulated at the beginning somehow plays out um, day to day in the schools and, and that's a major achievement. Uh, and in particular, the integration of strategies to expand opportunities for social emotional learning was clearly evident um, in the school development plan reviews that were discussed uh, at our previous meeting and in other initiatives uh, across the school schools. Um, secondly, a thorough review and discussion of the MCAS scores with the relevant department heads was very much appreciated, as was the prompt analysis and the and reaction and revision to the middle school math curriculum. So um, that's kind of seeing assessment and response in action, and that's great. Uh, improvements to school to home communication were seen as very positive, as was the increase in cooperation and collaboration with town officials and departments and community organizations within Duxbury. Uh, specifically, a constructive working relationship with the town manager and town finance director led to a smooth budget development process this past year and closer collaboration with the police department has enabled you and other administrators to uh, enhance school safety and provide training for faculty and administrators, and that's been very valuable. Uh, another point was that many members of the school community have participated in the consultation process for the district strategic plan, either in person or through their committee work, in person through their committee work or by attending a focus group or responding to the online survey. So that process was very transparently inclusive and um, so high marks for that. And high marks also for your ongoing work and budget development and monitoring and for the high quality of the district's financial management practices. Um, so, uh, and also for personnel management. Since you've arrived, there have been a number of um, very important positions in the district which uh, you've filled promptly and with highly qualified candidates. So those were all high points. Um, looking ahead to next year, um, school committee members mentioned that uh, the official launch of the district strategic plan, it seems to be an opportunity to further enhance communication and engagement with the community and to um, elicit conversations that perhaps go beyond the school budget discussions that have by necessity dominated a lot of our engagement with the community uh, and, and the strategic plan will be an opportunity to talk about curriculum and initiatives and students and other things than money. So that's um, very positive. Uh, and there was also some interest in understanding the ways in which the outcome of the, the contract negotiations, DTA contract negotiations, will strengthen professional culture in the district and that was um, a point taken. So. That's my summary. Um, would you like to, any of you like to add your own comments? I would just like to say thank you. I think it was a really good year, off really um, hitting your stride in the community. The community is getting to know you and you're getting to know the community. And I think it's been great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, I think you did a wonderful summary and Shannon, okay? I want to echo the comments. Um, John, you know, your second year in, um, and Danielle, your your first year has now come to a close. Katie, you've been in this role for six months. <laughs> um, new high school principal effectively last year, new assistant high school principal, three new department heads, new middle school principal, new SPED director, 
Uh, it's remarkable. Yeah. Um, and the caliber of the people that you've recruited to uh, Duxbury, um, I think is going to serve the community really well. Um, and um, I'm very grateful for your leadership. And, uh, and, and I agree that given the pressures under the budget, a lot of the focus has been trying to advocate for resources now that we've worked so hard to develop a vision for the future, mm -hmm. I think you're in a position to make the case of where we think Ducks Ferry could be in the future. Exactly. So I'm really looking forward to the, the coming years. Well done. Well done. And for me, I'm, I'm the touchy-feely teacher one, so um, mm -hmm. I, I just really enjoy the fact that you have high standards, you have high expectations. Um, it's evident you have students first. The social-emotional piece across the board is huge. It's, you can see the shift, you know, the way it was implemented this year, um, I thought was fantastic. And um, so kudos on that. Thank you. So from all of us, thank, thank you. you very much. I think it's worth, thank you very much, by the way. By the, uh, it's funny that the superintendent gets evaluated in public number one, which is kind of awkward. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, my evaluation and my goals really are district goals. Right. And the sort of my success, if you will, is really dependent on the team right. that's in place. And, you know, Peter, I appreciate you mentioning that. I mean, we have Danielle and um, Katie at the table, but there's a whole host of um, kind of new leaders in this district, and um, they're amazing, you know? And, uh, I mean, they're quite, I think we're building an all-star team, um, and they're all committed to the same uh, things I'm committed to, uh, you know, which is, which is students first. Um, and high standards, you know, for everybody across the board. But uh, it's really a fun work environment. Uh, but most of this work that I sort of document really happens because of other people. And so I just I feel it's important to important yeah. to say that. Um, and that way I can blame them if something goes wrong. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, yeah, it's an amazing. It really is an amazing team. And um, yeah. Well, and I think it's palpable in the district. I think. Yeah. When you walk through the schools and you have the students in your car driving around and you hear it, like the shift has been extremely positive. Yeah. Great, thank you. So thank you very much. Okay, um, we have some action items to go through, and they haven't dropped the puck yet, so okay, I think okay. we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So um, the first is to revise policy IKF which we um, had a few meetings ago. Last meeting, yeah. Yeah, and then initially it was a proposal we received from um, Mr. Holgate and Mr. Donovan back in. As far back in March, maybe, or something? Yeah. A while ago, yeah. Anyway, um, and the proposal is to um, revise the graduation requirement for physical education. Uh, it, in the current policy, it reads four semesters of physical education slash health, inclusive of intro to PE slash health nine, and health and wellness 10, and health and wellness 11 slash 12. So the change we would like to make, or we're proposing to make, uh, is that it would now read um, four semesters of physical education and health, inclusive of intro to PE health nine, and health and wellness 10, full stop. So basically removing the requirement for health and wellness 11, 12. And we received last, for the last meeting, there was a kind of crosswalk, curriculum crosswalk, um, showing how the units, some of the, uh, most of, well, all of the lesson units for um, health and wellness 11, 12 have been migrated to into the curriculum for uh, grades 9 and 10. So there isn't any loss of content. So is there any discussion around this proposal or are we prepared to vote? I'm just going to say I'm okay going to forward with it, but I, okay. I do, I would like um, there to be a reconsideration, an okay. ongoing reconsideration. I think the committee has been, is, is the Health and Wellness Committee? up and running again. Yes. Yeah, well, so yeah. I, I just think it's, I know there are a couple of different reasons why we had to shift, mm. make this shift and, you know, scheduling those types of things. And if those change, I, I just think sure. this needs to be something that continues to be reanalyzed. Um, I know all the topics are in there, but it's hard for me to 
believe that four years of what originally was, you know, what was originally supposed to be four years is now back into two years. Right. Are you really getting the full depth of the content that we right. originally intended? Right. So that's okay. I understand the reasons why this is happening, and I appreciate the efforts that have been made to maintain the spirit yeah. of it. But I do think we need to keep our eye on this one. Right. Okay. I great. will move that we approve that. Okay, great. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, so, in conjunction with that, um, we had delayed our approval of the high school um, handbook changes until we had revised the graduation requirements. So, So, um, can I have a motion to approve the changes to the high school handbook that were submitted in April? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that's basically mirroring what we've just discussed. Okay. Um, now, we also, uh, Dr. Antonucci has requested that we look again at the 2019-2020 calendar. Do you want to say anything about Yeah, I know. You just said, um, you know, I'm sorry I'm giving you a second, uh, right, a revision to the original calendar that was approved. It's not really a material change. Um, well, it's not immaterial either, but it's not a sig significant change to the, the overall kind of feel of the calendar. But we've been really looking at our uh, professional development time, uh, particularly the early release days. We just feel um, like we're not able to do what we need to do in the amount of early release days we've had, particularly at the elementary level. So the change in this um, calendar adds two elementary only early release days on two additional. So September 24th and March 5th are the additions, um, but everything else okay. remains the same. Okay. So I just wanted to bring it to your to you for approval just because it's a public document and sure. something that the school committee typically approves. Okay. Is there a reason why we did back to back September 23rd, 24th? Is that? No, that's I mean, October. There. Sorry, October. Those 24th. are um, parent Those conferences. Are parent that's parent conferences. conferences. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same as Oh, April. so we added September 24th. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was in October. Never mind. <laughs> okay. So, could I have a motion to approve the revisions to the 2019 2020 calendar? So moved. Okay. A second. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Quick, quick calendar question. Do we have the dates for the school committee meetings? We, we don't. We don't. Okay. We right. don't. So I you'll will. send those out? Yeah, I will. Yeah, I just. I'm happy to scheduling things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah okay. maybe you and I can work on yeah, that this summer. Yeah, we'll yeah it'll, be, it'll be helpful. I, tried, I was going to try to do it for tonight, and I just couldn't. It's okay. It's all right. All right. Thank you. Just want to Will we start in August, do we think, or Probably September. September 4th. Like first week in September. Is that, is that a 4th? September 4th. So it's right after Labor Day. Okay. 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 Great. And then um, we have a proposal for a drama, high school uh, drama trip to New York City. Um, from Mr. McFarland. Yeah, there's a, a really well done, I think, uh, memo and, and uh, template filled out by uh, Darren McFarland. Um, this trip's also rec approved and recommended by uh, Principal Dunman as well. And it's a trip, as, as he uh, talks about, that they do every, they've been doing every other year for a long time, since 2005. Uh, and so I do recommend approval. It's next year's three day trip, April 9th, 10th, and 11th. Okay. One day of school missed. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve this trip. Okay, great. That's Second. wonderful. Yeah, it's a great trip. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay, and then I um, wanted to bring to your attention the memo we received about the, the trip to Cuba, which mm -hmm. has been canceled um, because of change in government policy around visits to Cuba. Um, by the way, I do expect uh, that was Mrs. Sullivan. She yeah. sent me an email at like 5:30 tonight before the meeting. But she is working with a company, um, and I believe she's going to be bringing another proposal to us to go to Costa Rica. Okay, uh, it's another um, very s uh, similar purpose. Um, I forget which how she described it, um, 
but she's she's looking forward to sending a proposal Great. soon because for a service trip. Um, yeah, it's a she didn't use the word service trip, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, okay. sorry, okay. I'm blanking. That's all right. Uh, and and my understanding is that it the the funds that have been taken in by the Cuba trip will be refunded. Well, uh, so I think the plan right now well, a, a, either refunded or applied towards right. the, okay. the other trip. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Um, and just while we're on items that are in the folder for this meeting, you'll see there's a school wellness advisory council report, um, which we aren't talking about in the meeting, but it's for our um, our use. And then there's the uh, curriculum review for the mathematics department. That all the materials are in there. So I'd like to express appreciation for from the school committee for both those reports. I know considerable effort went into creating both of them, particularly the math report. So. Thank you for um, giving us that information. Um, and then lastly, we, um, Dr. Antonucci has proposed, would you like to propose? Or yeah, to so I, what I am um, proposing tonight is I'm making a recommendation to the school committee that we um, officially uh, appoint uh, Catherine Katie Blake um, as um, Director of Business and Finance uh, for the district. She's currently been serving as the acting business manager since uh, late December. Um, and I just want to provide some context. Um, the um, our school business manager, a permanent school business manager, has been on leave in the district since December, and he will not be returning to the district. Um, as you know, Katie's been serving as our acting business manager since late December, uh, and she's just done an incredible job for us. She has exceptional financial and analytical skills, coupled with exceptional interpersonal communication and leadership skills. Uh, and I think that's a recipe for success in school business administration. Um, I've worked with and hired several business, business managers in, in my career, um, and I've done the job myself. And I know what it takes to be successful in that job. And I also know the job market. And I'm really confident that we don't need to look any further uh, to find a more qualified candidate than Katie. You have heard me say this in the past, but I often refer to Katie uh, over the last two years. She's been employed by Duxbury Public Schools for two years. Uh, I refer to her as my secret weapon, even when she served as the assistant business manager and even prior to that, the financial analyst. In fact, many of the changes we made over the past two years, such as the new budget format, such as the change in charter accounts, um, would not have been possible without her. She was the, the impetus and the driving force behind that. So when I appointed her acting business manager in December, I had very high expectations for her, and she's only exceeded them. Uh, she's an exceptional talent. She's a pleasure to work with, and I strongly recommend her appointment. Uh, and regarding the title change from business manager to director of business and finance, um, I just think director of business and finance is a little more professional, it's a little more current. Um, it's also more in line with those other central office positions, such as Director of Technology, Director of Special Education, and I think it's just a little more reflective of the professional responsibilities of that job. It's a very important job. Um, so, uh, again, I strongly recommend that you appoint Katie. It's one of the responsibilities of the school committee, in addition to appointing, um, hiring, and sort of firing, um, not that I want to think about that, the superintendent, um, but you also um, are charged with uh, approving or not approving my recommendation for business manager, or, you know, school business official, uh, and assistant superintendent, which we did last summer. So, hence the recommendation tonight. Great. Okay. Would anybody like to comment? I am very thrilled, Katie, and I've gotten to see you in action a little more, doing the DTA negotiations, and that you have all the numbers there, and you're such a pleasure to work with. And Thank you. You're kind of a quiet force, <laughs> but it's all there, and it's uh, it's excellent. So thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Permanently. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, I, um, and I've told you directly, Katie. Um, step change in in uh, reporting from a school committee perspective. Um, so I think you're delivering everything that we need to do our jobs yeah. and be fiduciary responsible for the spending. And, um, and I'm thrilled that you're in this position, so I'm very happy uh, for the district, and I'm glad that you're on board. So. Thank you. What they said. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, so thank you very much. I'm 
uh, it's been wonderful to see how things have developed. Um, as a former financial analyst, I get very attached to spreadsheets, so I'm happy to see, <laughs> see them when they come. Um, and, uh, and it certainly gives a great deal of confidence when school committee members, as we go out into the community, to have very succinct sets of figures and statements about what's going on. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful kind of um, uh, uh, confidence that, um, that we now have. So thank you very much. I also should add, and I clearly don't need to convince you anymore, but that Katie also um, truly understands um, kind of how and why the business functions support teaching and learning. Right. Um, she's very interested and knowledgeable about education and has done an incredible job in the first six months just, in, what's, what's the right word, sort of ingraining herself into the entire um, culture here uh, of the Duxbury Public Schools. And that is the sign of a good business official in the school. Uh, it's really not just about the numbers, it's about right. why we're here and it's about supporting teaching and learning and students. So anyway, that's it. Enough, Great. enough praise. <laughs> Thank you very much. So um, could I have a motion to, um, to approve the appointment of Katie Blake as school um, director, director of business, of business and finance. Uh, absolutely. So moved. Second, all, with pleasure. All in favor? <laughs> Second, third. Okay, I think Aye. it's unanimous. Aye. Good job. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Good. Okay. So, um, Puck may have dropped. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is there, are there any other items? I just want to say quickly, um, I got to go to Alden Field Day this morning, and just I'm leaving the Alden building, but those kids, like, congratulations to the parents. They were amazing. And Mr. E, he's got this whole auditorium of screaming third, fourth, fifth graders, and then they quiet right down for them. And they enjoyed everything, and it was funny and engaging. You know, this was before they took them outside, but what a well-run school, and you can just see the level of respect, and it was fantastic seeing that because to put all those kids in one yeah. place is uh, pretty And if great. I could just add, it was a great day at Alden, but they awarded the Casali Award, yes. which was such a special um, ceremony and tradition, and they awarded it to two well-deserving fifth graders whose families were hiding up in the rafters, and it was just such, it was my first time seeing that, but it was really touching. And the kids special. all looked forward to it. It was the first thing May set off the bus. And she's like, oh, no, I'll get the, you know. I think that the best part was um, Denise Lamar's reaction to a child in her class getting the award. She acted as though she was getting an Academy Award <laughs> nomination. But um, every student was truly so happy to find out that a student in their class was yes. nominated, and they were truly happy for the people, the yep. two students that were selected. So it was just really nice. It's fantastic. Great. Yeah. Great. Chandler Field Day, also. Yes. also very, yeah. very impressive. And, and Chandler sing along. It's a busy day. It's a little strange. Yeah, sing along. I actually managed to sing along. Danielle, yeah. my daughter's 22, and I think the Casali Award is on the top of her resume. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh she made an impact. Yeah. Yeah. It was so special. Oh, it was, it was so amazing. It was great. Yeah. yeah, really amazing. And the, and a lot of the alums sort of come back. Right. It was, was a whole section. Had, there probably had 10, 10 yes. come back yeah. today. It's really amazing. It's fun. That's great. Wonderful. Okay, great. Any public comment? Shannon. <laughs> I know there's a game to watch, but, uh, <laughs> okay. so I'll keep this brief. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the MacBook return and refurbishment and redeployment process that's going on. Um, my understanding was, I think the whole town's understanding was that the, lap, the MacBooks were at the end of their useful life and there were only gonna be a handful of them that would be usable after we took them back in. And um, I'd like to stipulate that I, I agree with that. Four to five years of a laptop being used by an adult in a, a work environment is the end of its useful life. And there's a lot of wear and tear that goes on. And so I was big and still remain a big supporter of the Chromebooks replacing them. Um, so my, as of the March 13th presentation that Cheryl made, the plan was to take the 600 best laptops that were in the best condition out of, I think it's a little over 1,600 laptops altogether or something in that realm, um, and deploy them. And I understood based on the presentation where they were going and why they were going. It was a lot more laptops than I expected to be re redeployed, to be honest with you. Um, but if we can redeploy them and they're still usable, okay. Um, so all of that, hung together for me. Um, 
I was surprised to get the letter we got the, as parents about the cost to turn in these machines that were at the end of their usable life. And don't get me wrong, I think personal r responsibility and being respectful of equipment that the town has purchased is critical. And particularly critical going into this new equipment that's coming out, right? So I, I don't have any issue with holding parents to the contract that we all signed and um, some people bought insurance. Some of the biggest wear and tear items on MacBooks, and if you guys, I see Dr. Klingeman has one, you know that your power cord is not gonna last you more than a few years. They're just, and if you look on the internet or you talk to corporate IT departments, they will tell you it's a failure point. It's a possibly could be considered a bad, bad design, as is the issue with the falling lids of the laptops. I saw the video that was put out to the kids showing that picking it up by the, the display and moving it places that way is what causes that. Um, and I'm sure that does contribute to it. When I took my laptop, my MacBook Air, to the Apple store to have the battery dealt with, because that's a major failure point, right? And I think that's what, a lot of that and the logic boards are what you guys have been replacing to keep them functional for the four to five years. Um, she pointed at my safety cover, almost identical to the one on my kids' school laptops that you guys issued to them. And she said, that's loosening your hinge. She said, it will continue to loosen your hinge as long as you keep the safety cover on there. So I would stipulate that that's a common failure point for Max. Um, it could be considered wear and tear. And I'm concerned about the price list that shows that if that's your problem, it could cost you $355 that you need to pay to the school. So I guess my question for you guys is, and I gotta also tell you, there's nothing wrong with my kids' laptops. I am here because I don't understand, um, I'd like to better understand what your, the intent is here. And if we're really just gonna keep the six or 700 best laptops, do we need to repair all of them back to perfect condition and do we need to charge households 355 bucks for something that's a common failure point so that's kind of that's it i'm not really prepared to t talk talk tonight shannon that's a surprise the question but I, I would just say two things i know you've had extensive conversations with cheryl lewis and i, I hope she answered your your questions to her your satisfaction but um it's a small teeny teeny minority of students that are going to be charged um, and most of them come from abuse. And I, I, I don't know, um, I, I really appreciate your point and I kind of have to process it, but I, I mean, it's public property. And, and I, I guess there's something to be said for abusing public property and then having the taxpayers pay, pay, pay for damage. I hear you if there's like an extenuating circumstance. So but I don't know the numbers. But abuse is different than typical wear and tear. And typical wear and tear on a five-year-old mm -hmm. power charger mm -hmm charger is not uncommon. Yeah. I mean, it is to be expected in mm -hmm. the environment. Yeah. And but I, and if I, the I, town I, is yeah. going to get rid of the other seven or eight hundred laptops, yeah. what happens? Are are we are you going to actually repair them with the money that the parents pay for those chargers? I that I it just was yeah. confusing to me. Yeah. Um, it's a good question. I mean, I I don't know what to say. I think I I have a little different different. Um, spin on it, but I, I appreciate the feed, I do appreciate the feedback, and I hope we're making good decisions um, about charging or not charging, you know, depending on th those very issues. I, I'm not sure. It's not it's something I, I'm involved in every day, so I'd have to get some more information, and like I said, I know you talked to Cheryl, so did you not get satisfactory answers? I know you've talked to her a couple of times. But. I'm more interested, I mean, yes, she gave me great answers to all of my questions. Great. Um, what I'm interested in is what was the strategic view of what we were going to do with those and and are we going to try and garner any value back out of those laptops and is that the purpose for charging parents? And I'm hopeful that what you say is right, that it was to the, the letter with the relatively high price points, which max are. Um, and their parts are, but um, if that was really to get people's attention and to say, hey, look, 
you know, we, you can't just abuse these things. Don't be throwing them off the balcony. <laughs> you know, don't be dropping them on the way to yeah. school. I understand mm -hmm. that. I think most of those laptops, based on some research I did, if we sold them, if we sold them, the maximum we could get out of them would be $180. And the repair for the display is $355. So there's another, um, the keyboard is $150. That's a lot. I'm not sure you can put a price on our ability to redeploy them and have them for another five years. So there is there's a price. And again, I don't, I, don't I, I have to process what you said. I, I'm not prepared to give you specifics. I just, I do sort of, I don't disagree with our, our um, decision to charge. It's most of them come from abuse and I don't believe the taxpayer should have to pay, you know, for, for kids abusing public, public property. So that's all I'll say about it. I have really nothing else to And I think we to have add. to also strongly encourage families to take out the insurance because when you're dealing with devices, any one of us who takes great care of our device can still have a, an error or something go on that causes there to be a repair need. And I do have to say that they aren't um, being treated as carefully as we would like in a lot of cases. And so I think that um, all we can say is that we're dealing with kids that are dealing with computers for the first time, yeah. many of them, um, and don't understand how delicate they can be, and so I think the insurance is the best recommendation we can make for families. So they're not put in a position where they're expected to pay a large sum of money for a device that was secondhand. But we have to um, ask for the full replacement cost when we're charging the insurance, despite the year that that computer um, was starting to be used. And, you know, so this year's computers were a little bit older, but the insurance was still um, recommended. Yeah, some of the things though on the list aren't covered by the insurance. Right because it's considered normal wear and tear. Yeah. So that comes out of pocket. That, I mean, I just wanted to bring it up yeah, and have a yeah. conversation yeah. about it. I mean, like yeah. I said, it's not coming out of my personal pockets. I think both of my girls have computers in good shape, yeah. um, but it just surprised me. Well, I think uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that the, the letter was composed without any understanding of what proportion of the laptops would be coming back in what condition. So yeah. the kind of, the balance of money figures and how much how much we'd be how many units we'd be able to redeploy and things like that. Were, it was kind of based on unknowns. Maybe because we might have more information later in the year that would make more sense of it. Yeah. Once the once the stuff is handed in, maybe we could get an accounting of, of what sure. how happened, many actually were yeah, because yeah. we're we're projecting what the cost right. might be to parents. Yeah. I don't know. I saw a video, um, one of the classes watching the video, um, and the kids were going, oh, I've got that. I've got that. I've got that. So, um, you know, I'm not sure what it will be. I just, uh, yeah. yeah, I just was, particularly because the Chromebooks actually cost $150 less exactly. or more than yeah. the repair on right. some of these. But I also do understand that that you don't get the cash dollars back into the school budget. I, I, I want to just be clear too, and again, I really do appreciate the feedback. I, we're not trying to make money. If, 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 if anybody, it's not, it's, it wasn't about that. It was really just to make them whole. Um, yeah, I didn't and, think that you were trying yeah, to Yeah, I just, I just want to make that clear. It's not, it's, we don't really get to, can't do anything with the money, right, so. I just hate to yeah. see any unnecessary money coming out of parents' pockets. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, because yeah, we as taxpayers are paying for the Chromebooks to right. replace them. Right. right. So that's a, I guess not knowing any of the background, just um, at some point there should be just a review of the exactly. data before the bills all go out and just make a judgment call about um, you know how how pervasive is it, how big are the bills, what's That'd be reasonable. Great. You know what I mean? Because yeah, we'll be glad to get it. I don't think it's. I really don't think it's a big issue. I haven't so talked so to Cheryl about it for a couple it, weeks. It might, but, it might you know. be a minor. Issue. It could be a major issue, but until you have a chance, and when are all the laptops coming in? Like this no. week, right now they have been, they've been being collected over okay. the past. Few so weeks. that's just I would just say recognize before you just send out lots of bills to parents that you give it at a high level some consideration. So that, that makes sense. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly, Peter, the process, so I can't I can't commit exactly. to yeah. that exactly. Well, but I'll no, certainly follow up with Cheryl and. Yeah, it's yeah. just because. Um, you know, a dollar, what's that expression? Dollar wise, pound foolish, or yeah. something like that. Penny wise. Penny wise. <laughs> <laughs> Pounds and dollars. dollars. Uh, <laughs> just, Brexit. we want to make sure that what we're doing is fair, reasonable, and not going to then, um, you know, turn around and hammer parents on mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's not so. the intent, for sure. Great. Okay. 
Well, thank Super. you for thank bringing you. that to our attention. Thank you. Thank you. Do you take Amazon chargers? Yeah, I bought I my share of those. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many are going to be handed in. <laughs> <laughs> the chargers, by the way, is as a consumer an unbelievable thing. Yes, right? they don't it's like it's so it frustrating. Molly's got original one. Yeah. Wow. Molly's got original one. Great. Insurance. So, um, yeah. if there are no other public comments. I think we're ready to adjourn. And I want to thank everybody generally for a wonderful school year. And we're all looking forward to summer. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, could we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. So we want